Hey birds and bees, so you are looking to style a scaramouche wig, well I have you covered. This is the base wig that I am using, fresh out the bag and put on a wig head. This wig is from Coscraft in the style Ash and the colour Navy. A wig head is not necessary but I find it much easier to work on. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's level and then put a pin in either side on the temple and in the middle of the head. For this style I will be using my hair straighteners with an adjustable temperature dial, hair grips to move things out of place but you can also use clips, a very underappreciated tool in wig styling, a clothes steamer, trust me this makes everything so much easier in all of your wigs. You'll also obviously need scissors and in this tutorial I will also be using thinning scissors but they are not necessary. For this wig, I'm only going to be using this to finish it and set everything in place, but a wig stylist's best friend is got to be glued hairspray by Schwarzkopf. To prepare my wig, making sure everything lies perfectly flat against my face, I'm going to be using the clothing steamer. Since this is a synthetic wig, this heats the fibres and then once they have cooled, they will stay in the position that they have landed in. Doing this all the way around the wig and combing as I go gives me a nice flat base to work with and as you can see it looks very different to when we started already. As always when styling wigs we're going to make sure that we have our reference photo ready. Since different parts of the wig are going to be styled differently I like to section these off to give me more of a visual as I work. It really helps me narrow things down and focus. This is just something that works for me. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. It's just an extra step you get to miss. I'm also going to pin down the back of the wig to stop it lifting up. Time to section off this mullet. I'm going to pick a little section at the back and follow the weft line along the back and just kind of pin up the top bit, really. This means I have nice, clean access to the hair underneath in order to trim it to a flicky length. This isn't going to be an exactly canon wig by the way, this is going to be how I like the wig to fit my face because I would rather it fit my face and I feel comfortable in the costume than it be perfectly canon and I hate myself. So we are officially ready to start cutting. I'm going to show you the technique that I use with my scissors that's worked for me all these years and hopefully it works for you too. What we're going to be doing is making the slicing motion at the same time as we drag the scissors down and this will give a lovely kind of razory cut. So moving the scissors up and down as we snip them, I guess is the way to go. It's more like a draggy kind of feel. I'm going to take it in turns working on both sides of this. I want a kind of gradient where it gets shorter at the top and longer at the bottom and we're just going to do that on both sides until we end up with a nice little point at the middle at the back. I'm also going to make sure that that point is the length that I want it to be as well. So annoyingly my phone that was filming this actually died and I didn't film this part of the tutorial but I will show you exactly what I did on the other side so we can go from it from there. The bangs are going to be adjusted properly when it's on my face later but for now here's what I did. I picked up a section and then I started at the top and worked my way down like that, just cutting in that same method as before. If you have hairdressing scissors like I do, here's how to hold them. The ring finger goes in the side with the little sticky out bit and your thumb goes in the other one. Your ring finger rests on the sticky out bit. And that motion I'm doing with my comb now is to show you exactly how I'm cutting again. Take your time with it, work section by section, and remember you can always take off but you can't put it back on. To work out a rough length for how much I wanted the bangs to be, I put the top of the comb to my hairline and worked out where I wanted the bangs to be and then rest it to the line of the wig um, and then added a little bit because, again, I want to make the bangs a little bit longer because I can't put more back on and I'll adjust it again when it's on my face. For the size of this wig I decided the height at which I wanted these to sit and then did an angle because I felt like it gave more of a sharp feature which was something that I was after as I thought it would suit my face more.
This is where thinning scissors come in. I decided the edge was a little too harsh, so I decided to just snip the edges with thinning scissors. Just kind of loosens it up a bit. It can, however, look quite bad if not done well, so if you're new to it, the best thing you can do is lift it up at an angle in sections and cut messily with them because then it doesn't give you weird jaggedy edges. You'll see what I mean if you ever do it on a test strip. Personally, I also prefer to lift sections of hair up as I do it. I feel like it looks a lot more natural to do it this way. If you don't have thinning scissors, you can use the normal scissors and snip up into the hair as well. Moving on to the other side, I can show you how I did it. So I'm going to use a pin into the wig head at the same level as the other one, so I can sort of use it as a guide mark for where I need to know how short to cut it, basically. With my markers in place, I'm just going to jump right into it and start cutting that hair exactly how I want it. Before cutting any more off, I'm just going to check the length with the other side and make sure that it lines up. If you're satisfied it's symmetrical, then just start tidying it up and do the same that you did on the other side with thinning it and all that. This was the point I decided I wanted a little bit more short at the front that would curl around my face and just give a little bit extra texture, so I did the same thing I did at the back with the melody design and just created a layer effect where it started short and then got longer the back. I guess that's how you describe it. I then moved on to hair straighteners to curl certain bits around my face. When working with hair straighteners and synthetic fibers it's important that your hair straighteners have a temperature gauge on them and you test strand somewhere that you can't see to make sure it doesn't melt them. Just as with the steamer when you heat up the hair it will become more pliable and you kind of just want to hold it in place until the fibers have cooled and then it should stay in place. Be careful not to burn yourself. As I make my way around you can see that I also had let the hair down at the back and just cut it straight across like I had done at the front to kind of match the length of the, uh, I don't know, the stupid choppy bits at the front that kind of make him look like you've got a bowl cut cross with a mullet. Sorry Scaramouche, we love you but your hair is so stupid. Speaking of mullety bits, I'm just going to flick out the back so that you can see it behind my neck when I'm wearing the wig. Before I take it off the stand, I'm going to give it a quick spritz of hairspray. With the wig now on my head, I've pinned the stupid choppy bits off my face so I can curl some shorter parts around. This kind of helps hide my own temple fuzz that I have on my hair and also means I can get closer. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. I really hope it does. Do tutorials, they said. You'll be great at it, they said. I can't explain anything. <laughs> I'm also going to be using this time to trim the bangs to a more desired length now that I know where exactly they sit on my face. For the tips, I'm going to spray some hairspray on my fingers and just roll the ends. And with those finishing touches, my Scaramouche wig is complete. All that's left to do is do a zhuzh of hairspray at a distance. You don't want to do that too closely or it will just make the hair look wet. And then I'm just going to quickly add a layer of blow dry over the top just to get that into place. But that's not necessary, that's just me being picky. And with that, this tutorial for my Scaramouche wig is done. Sorry if my voice was a little up and down, changing, and softer than usual. Flynn is asleep and very ill, so I'm pulling an all-night looking after him. Anyway, if you use this tutorial to make a Scaramouche wig, I would love to see it, so please tag it and send anything my way. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.